Welcome back everyone, George here. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be talking about a fish that I think is a absolutely amazing little tetra and that is the rummy nose tetra. These guys have some things uh, going for them that uh, get overlooked and that is a built-in barometer about the health of your tank. And when we come back we're going to talk about what those indicators are and how it can help you to understand the health of your tank. Thank you for joining me. When we come back, we'll talk rummy nose Tetris. Hang in there with me, we'll be right back. So as I said in the intro, the rummy nose Tetra is a very unique Tetra in the sense that it has some qualities that I didn't even know about several years ago when I first started keeping this fish. I always thought that they were quite difficult and uh, I found out a lot more about them and uh, have really started to enjoy uh, the qualities that they bring to a community tank. Now, one of the things that I want to say is that I have given a species profile on this fish before. Uh, this is not going to be the same thing. This is going to be very much about uh, these, like I said, qualities and the barometer that is built into these fish that give it such uniqueness and ability to be an indicator as to the health and quality of the water in your tank or other problems that you may not have realized you're having. Now the tank that you're looking at right now, as you can see, there are rummy nose tetras in here and there are also some black neons. Now both of these fish are able to withstand the temperatures in this particular tank. This is a discus tank. That's a, uh, something you need to know. You will see that as we proceed with this uh, video. But it's so important that you understand that uh, these fish can withstand temperatures that a lot of tetras cannot and that is temperatures from 86 to 88 degrees, which are ideal temperatures for your discus fish. And uh, one of the things that uh, I noticed as I was keeping these fish and uh, keeping them in other tanks at lower temperatures is often I would uh, get them from a store who had told me that they were basically quarantining their fish before selling them. And then within a day or two, I would notice that they would have ick, which is called stress ick in this particular case. And uh, it was very, very devastating to uh, wiping out pretty much the whole group of fish that I had purchased. And uh, this happened to me several times, so I kind of gave up on them. As I started keeping discus fish, somebody came to me and said, you know, these fish do really well in temperatures between 86 and 88 degrees, as I said earlier. And as I uh, talked more and more about these fish, I started to learn and understand that not only were they able to live in these higher temperatures and become a absolutely beautiful fish for the, the, the community tank, uh, in this case, discus community tank, uh, which I do keep a lot of, and uh, they also uh, showed some research that the nose that is red, and thus the name Rummy Nose Tetra, uh, is also a great barometer for a uh, fish to give you indications as to whether or not your water quality or properties in the tank are sufficient. Now, I know that sounds strange, but it is absolutely something that you can see and something that uh, many, many people have validated to me as I've learned more and more about this particular fish. Now, I love this fish for many, many reasons. Uh, it's, it's obvious that if you've picked a Tetra for your tank, uh, Rummy Nose would be an ideal uh, choice. Uh, but again, as I said, they come with some difficulties and I don't recommend them for beginners. But for those of you who are keeping fish and have not decided on exactly 
what type of tetra you want to keep with your discus fish, for example, uh, I would suggest to you that the rummy nose tetra is an absolute perfect candidate for that community tank. Not only because of their beauty and the uniqueness of their look, but also because of these properties that I'm talking about that are a barometer for the health of your tank. Now, if your tank is off as far as uh, water quality, or maybe there's an ammonia spike, uh, there's nitrites uh, that are high, or even nitrates that are a little bit higher than they should be, this fish will tend to dull in color on its nose, uniquely on its nose, and that is a good indicator that there is something going on in your tank that you need to address rather quickly. And I think it's uh, just an absolutely amazing little uh, barometer uh, for you to have that gives you that little bit of uh, heads up that there's something going on in your tank that you didn't know about. Now, this can come from lack of water changes, uh, a poor uh, uh, quality tank, in other words, uh, maybe not just water, but uh, uh, a tank that does not have enough oxygenation to it. Uh, maybe you are seeing spikes in algae and those sorts of things. But they are a great indicator because they truly will, and I have done this purposefully and experimented with it, they truly will dull that nose rather quickly if there's something off in your tank. And it's something that you need to pay attention to because uh, when that nose goes dull, now if it's an individual in the group that has a dull nose, that would not be something that I would be concerned about that your, your whole tank has got a problem. Uh, they, that may just be unique to that individual. Maybe that individual is sick in some way or whatever. But if you have a group of these and they're all showing the same signs that the uh, nose is dulling in color and they are a little bit listless or they're bouncing in the tank and that sort of thing, uh, that is a good indicator that something else is going on uh, that you didn't know about. Now, as you can see, this is a rather large tank. It's a 75 gallon and it is a discus tank. It's uh, uh, one that I put together here recently, and I actually did a video on this. So if you want to go back and look at that video uh, and see the genesis of this tank here, uh, I will put that in uh, the description down below and give you an opportunity to go back and uh, look at how this tank was put together. But when I was putting this tank together, I knew that the Rummy Nose Tetra was going to do well with this tank. This is a display tank, so it's important that the quality of this tank uh, remain high at all times simply because there's a lot of people viewing it all, all, all the time. So uh, it was very important to me to have a fish that not only was striking and beautiful in the Tetra family uh, that um, I could depend on uh, once they got past the quarantine stage and that they would be a good indicator as to the health of the tank. Now, I do uh, uh, want to have a disclaimer on this. This is a tank that gets about a quarter of a water change every day. Now, that's not necessary. Uh, as you get a more mature tank, you are going to find that uh, you don't need to do that uh, quarter water change every day. Now, I'm not trying to tell you not to. Uh, if you are able to, as such as I am, uh, to do a quarter water change every day, I totally recommend that and uh, would suggest it to you because it is going to add to the quality of the health of your fish, uh, especially, you know, high end fish like uh, the discus, which uh, as you can see from this particular video, uh, as I pan out here, you can see that uh, this is a rather large tank and there are discus fish in here and I want to protect those fish. I want to make sure that those fish are healthy. 
And that is another reason why the Rummy Nose Tetra was my choice for this particular tank is because I wanted to fish that I could look at and I could see very quickly that there was nothing going on with my tank that was a problem. No diseases, no uh, oxygenation problems. That's another thing that these guys will do. If there's low oxygen in your tank, their nose will dull. It is such an unbelievably cool feature that is built into this fish that a lot of people don't know about. Now, these are a South American fish. They are found in uh, the wild. Uh, there are several varieties of these. I think there's three, actually, varieties of uh, these uh, Rummy Nose Tetras, and they tend to have slight differences in them. Some of them have slightly larger tails. Some of them have slightly brighter uh, and uh, longer uh, noses uh, that have the, the red uh, uh, bulb on the front of their face. And uh, some of them are just bigger in nature. Uh, I think the Peruvian wild uh, are my favorite simply because they are larger. Now, I would tell you that if you are going to go out and buy these fish, that you absolutely buy them from somebody that, like I said earlier in the video, is somebody that you can depend on to have quality fish, somebody that quarantines their fish before you get them, and uh, make sure that your fish are going to be healthy and that uh, you uh, do not uh, end up with getting fish that come home with what they call stress ick, which is a very susceptible disease to the rummy nose tetra. Uh, the uh, temperature, as I said earlier, can really help with reducing the possibility of that. If you can get them home and get them into a quarantine tank and slightly raise the temperature daily for the week or two that you're going to have them in quarantine before adding them to your community tank, I would ratchet that temperature up uh, to that 86 degree to 88 degree point because these fish will tolerate the temperatures, but they will also uh, not get ick, which is one of the most susceptible things to this fish because it cannot live in temperatures at 86, not, at least not the variety of ick that we're talking about here. And also in your quarantine tank, what I would do is add a little bit of uh, Paragard by Seachem. I would do that uh, for at least three days to make sure that these fish get off to a really good start. It's a very mild medication that I use for all of my quarantine tanks, regardless of whether or not I know of any kind of problems with parasites or ick or any other diseases that are uh, just starting out or not evident in the fish when you first buy them. So, uh, as I said, if you're looking for a beautiful Tetra, the Rummy Nose Tetra is an absolute perfect candidate. Go out and get yourself some of these guys and uh, really, really enjoy them because they are absolutely perfect for... Uh, most community tanks uh, that are, uh, you know, like a discus tank where it's a large tank. Buy a school of, you know, 10 to 15 or even 20 of these because they do best when they're in a large group. And also, as I said, they can be a much better indicator in a large group because if you have a single individual whose nose is dulling in color. That can mean something unique to that individual. Thank you for joining me today. Give me a like on this video. Leave your comments down below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. And thank you for joining me. Please share this with your friends, and give me a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining me. We will see you on the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.